Yeah. This is a beautiful time in God's presence. We will be having, as always. Let's turn our Bibles this morning to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4. As a matter of fact, we will be reading verse 1 to 24. But we won't do that today anyway, because we are going to continue this teaching. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verses clearly states, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Without faith, it is impossible to get anything from Him. That's what the, the Greek word translates it to. It is impossible to get anything from God. You can't get anything from Him except you come through faith. But the Bible also tells us that we, God has dealt to every one of us, each and every one of us, the measure of faith. So the subject of faith re remains an elusive one to very many Christians across the globe, irrespective of their, their race, color, tribe. It remains elusive it, it remains confu confusing to many christians then you're not talking about strong faith there are few times the bible made reference to that word to that phrase strong faith we have strong faith we also have weak faith now it is funny if you do not understand what weak faith is and you are trying to acquire a strong faith. Today is going to be the introduction, the mystery of a strong faith. Part one, today we'll take the part one. Part of the breakdown of the teaching for this brief series will be to understand what faith is. We will also understand what the faith belief is tied to. We will get to look at how to tap into it. Then we will now see how to develop a strong faith. So today may look like a summarized introduction that thereafter we'll dive, we'll dive into it. But there is something we need to understand. We are using the account of a man that God pulled from the hidden world, Abraham. Abraham became Abraham. There's something we fail to understand in that Genesis chapter 12, then Genesis chapter 13, and thereafter, to Genesis 21, 22. Precisely 20, from 19, 20, 21, verse 15, when God showed up, asked him to make a sacrifice and stuff like that. Abraham didn't pray to have a strong faith, as we will see. Abraham didn't fast to have a strong faith. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use one of my many professions to help you appreciate how to tap and activate a strong faith. Now, in networking, if you want high availability when i say high availability that means you always want to have network particularly in this era of cloud computing you know think of, think uh about um uh oracle for example having clients all across the globe you don't want to put your data or your services in their cloud computing facility or storage facility and when you people need it it's not available because there was a problem 
So usually what we do in networking, please listen, this is very important. Once I drop this, then we can go into it. In networking, when you are dealing with a very high sensitive uh, networking facility, that means the client wants his or her data to be always available 247. You give them a minimum of two connections. One of them is called a redundant link. Redundant in the sense that it is not touched. Listen carefully. I'll just summarize the entire series of the mystery of a strong faith. You never assess a strong faith until you first go through the natural process of the faith, um, the weak faith. It is weak faith that always metamorphoses into strong faith. I've mentioned two things now. Weak faith, then strong faith. Just like in networking, you have your active line, then you have a redundant line. Now, why do you have a redundant line? What it means is that if I'm connecting from point A to point B to serve the client, I will run the first cable, then I will run another cable with exact same configuration. Listen carefully. The redundant cable is never activated except the active cable fails. <laughs> Are you with the apostle this morning? The redundant cable is never activated until you have exhausted the active cable. Once the active cable fails, the redundant cable picks up. You know why? Because both of them apparently are active, but the client never knows that there is a redundant cable. So when one cuts, when the first one cuts off, the second one just continues. So it, it, you wouldn't even notice that there was a breakage. You know why? Because both of them are running, are, are being run to the same end. All along, you've been having like two transmissions, but you didn't know. Because it's just one you are seeing. You'll be surprised when they come, because from their end, they can trace it that one has broken. They will not come and call it that one has failed, and they can come and fix it for you. Now you see, you are working while they are fixing. The moment they finish fixing, guess what? The active can come back or the active now becomes the redundant because the redundant is already active. Are you seeing it? You can never assess faith, strong faith, activating faith, if you have not utilized your sense. Romans chapter 4. This is an introduction to that. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh had found? What has he found? Please, the word flesh here is sense. The sense realm. What you see, the one you can touch, you can feel, you can smell. is the sense realm. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh had found? What had he found? And he asks a question. Because it ended with a question mark. Verse 2. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. Please, the word that justified means made righteous. So justification is righteousness. As we progress, you get to discover that there is a tiny line between righteousness and faith. In fact, faith qualifies you for righteousness. It is faith that gives you righteousness to receive. Now listen, it is the verb righteousness. Not the noun righteousness. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's the reason you can have a verb righteousness. For example, human beings are not expected to fly. Because your nature, flying is not part of it. So the flying is an action. But a bird is designed to fly. So flying is their own verb. Because their nature, they are designed to actually fly. Is that simple enough? So that is what we are looking at. See? You don't, you, don't, you don't pray to have big faith. You don't even pray to have faith. You don't fast to have faith. There are structures. The Bible clearly says in Romans 10, 17, then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You are not smarter than God that he didn't put fasting there. You are not smarter than God that he didn't put a praying there. You don't pray to have faith. No. 
You release your faith through prayers, your spoken words. So if you have nothing, you release nothing. The mystery of a strong faith. For what God said, in, for what said the scripture, verse 3, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now look at it. Justification, righteousness. Believe God, counted for righteousness. I hope you understand there's a difference between faith and actually believing. Yeah, we'll go to a little bit of spiritual technicalities. Everybody believes. The Bible says the devil believes, but he also trembles. Belief is a natural response human beings do when they have confidence in what they are saying. I hope you know that. A child believes if he asks the father for money, the father will give him. That, that doesn't require faith. That's just belief. That's not the faith of the scripture. That is censoring. Why? That's sense. Because it is the responsibility of the father to take care of the child. To pay the child's school fees. Please follow me very gently. Until we exhaust our active line, the redundant line does not become active. Faith is that redundant line. It never becomes active until the first active line, which is the sense line, fails. Abraham went through this process. And it baffles me that we have been studying Genesis 12, Genesis 13 for so long, and that we didn't even see it from that Genesis 12 down to Genesis 21, when the promise of Isaac was eventually fulfilled. That we didn't even bother to even see that. Abraham didn't just wake up to jump. Where Abraham got to the climax was level after 11 years. First and foremost, like I said, you do not, the mystery of a strong faith is that you move from sense realm. You must exhaust the sense naturally first. There's no two ways a, about it. God told Abraham, didn't Abraham believe from day one? Abraham believed. But guess what? Abraham's belief was tied to sense. It was normal. Some years back, I spoke on this understanding the language of God. To Abraham, it was normal. There was no barrenness in, in his family. It was normal for, for him. Yes, he believed God. That was sense realm belief. Please listen carefully. It was a sense realm belief. I will do a summary today and stop. Next week, we're going to start afresh an activity full blown. Abraham actually believed. But what was the belief? It was a sense realm belief. Then they kept living. Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, year seven, year eight, year nine, year ten. Then it dawned on him. But wait a minute. As we will read. His son was not by works. What was the works there? We we'll, we'll go through these details next week. The works was that he was having sexual intercourse with his wife. So and I learned from the scriptures. You will learn next week also. That having sexual intercourse is not a guarantee your wife will get pregnant. Otherwise, Sarah would have gotten pregnant. The issue of conception still remains a mystery to human beings. Because that is the realm of the Almighty. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture said clearly, if it was by works, hmm, Abraham would have had something to glory, but not before God. Because he knew he did all the works for, for 24 years plus. And not to have a, now listen to how you, you will see next to get the Bible says, and be not weak in faith. He staggered not at the promise. So that tells you that from the beginning, Abraham staggered. But he got to a point he wasn't weak anymore in the faith. Why? How did Abraham get to this point? Cast your mind back to the book of Genesis from verse 12, from, from verse 12 down to, to chapter 21. First of all, Abraham needed to exhaust himself. First year, second year, third year, up to tenth year. Then he not done on him. Say, okay, no, no, no. We are two. Please listen carefully, especially for couples. We are two here. When it comes to childbearing, that's why you understand that the miracles of childbearing that happens always take time. 
I want to tell you why today. First year, second year, three years. You are hearing of 15 years in marriage, 20 something years in marriage. Why? We go through the process. It is two persons that is involved in this. At first, we all believe that this thing is going to work the very first year. And it doesn't work. Then you now begin to ask yourself. Let's not kid ourselves. You ask yourself, is it me or my partner? Is it me or my spouse? Rather. Is it me or my spouse? Now, you are working on yourself. But you don't know the spiritual level of your spouse. It could be the husband. It could be the wife. So, for Abraham, Abraham felt no shaking. No shaking. Then after a while, ninth year, 10 years, then it began to dawn on her. Even Sarah was the one that now said, okay, no problem, since I can't give birth. Okay, you go into the maid and then let's, let's uh, let her bear on my behalf. Don't you see the so much belief Sarah had about the maid, but not for herself. She didn't have faith for herself, but she had faith for the maid. Look at it. Hagar had not given birth before that they now knew that, okay, Hagar can conceive. Are you, are, are you getting what I'm saying? So, but she confidently said to the husband, you go into Hagar. Let her conceive on my behalf. That's, that, that was a fit statement. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, and guess what? Abraham actually went. Why did Abraham enter Hagar? Because Abraham wanted to test his own self. To guess what? Don't forget the dual line, the active and the redundant line. The, the, dual, the active line is always the sense. You get to faith through the sense. You must exhaust the sense first. There are no two ways about it. That is why if a wife asks the husband or vice versa for money, you don't pray. You don't require the faith from the scriptures. You just ask. You believe you will get it. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to show you the sense belief and the faith belief. You need to understand the difference when you are operating faith belief or it is sense belief. Every day we apply, we operate a, a sense belief. Don't forget, sometime in, in this church, in Roman Grace Ecclesia, I taught us on the dual identity, the dual identity of human persons. We are physical, we are also spirit being. So we are entitled to operating, enjoying the principles in the physical world. That's where the five senses come in. However, when it is our spirit that is involved, we are relating to God, we must learn how to jettison the, the, the senses, the five senses, and then activate the faith realm, the faith sense, as I uh, sometimes call it. So, so you see, it makes it a little bit tricky. So it, it requires a lot of spiritual maturity to understand when to plug. But you see, many times what we are doing is that we are trying to plug both cable at the same time, both the active and the redundant. And then we are wondering why what we are getting is still a sense signal, not a faith signal. You can't plug the two at the same time. Hebrews 11 clearly says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. It didn't say you need faith to please your spouse. It didn't say you need faith to go to school. Praise God. He didn't say you need faith to drink water. That, th those are purely sense things. But however, in the case of sickness or disease, where the person suddenly cannot lift a cup, after exhausting the sense realm, then you can connect with faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's why it is foolish to, for people to have problems with taking medication. The drug you are taking is not going to your spirit man. It's going to your body. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is going to your physical body. Haven't exhausted that and it's not working for you. You know that it is not beyond the sense realm, the physical realm. You cannot quietly activate your redundant cable, which is the faith belief. Abraham did that. And guess what happened? Hagar got pregnant. So it not dawned on her. Why did Abraham do that? He was trying to clear, to find out where the problem is. So he can know the particular word of God to apply to it. It's a, it's a process. It's not because he was doubting. He wanted to find fault with his spouse. No. He wanted his own opportunity to clear the active line. So he can enter the redundant line. Which is faith line. Guess what? Once the active line has failed. You don't have problem thinking about it anymore. That's the word. It has failed. It has failed. Guess what? You are not dealing with the redundant line that you have not made active. That's how to walk into a strong faith. You can't be operating the sense realm and faith at the same time. It won't work. So that's why today, 
Your faith is high. Then guess what? The time you feel it crashes is when you now see something happen. It's always when something physical happens. Then you find that it just crashes down. Guess what? You just realize that your active line is still on. Because if your active line has dropped, it doesn't matter what you see physically. It does not touch you anymore. Because as far as you are concerned, as far as you are concerned, you have declared that the active line, the sense line has failed. So you have packed it up, irrespective of what you see. That's what the Bible meant when he said, Abraham did not stagger at the promise. Be not weak in faith, but not from the beginning. It wasn't so from the beginning. Otherwise, it wouldn't have taken him 24 years. God never said the 25th year, Sarah shall conceive. Did he say that? Was that part of the promise? No. God never put a time limit. But see how Abraham slowly developed. Because when it comes to childbearing, it is two persons that is involved. Praise God. Hallelujah. And both of them need to come to a, a point of alignment. Very, very important. They may not be at the same level of faith, but they need to come to the same point of alignment. And that's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you believe strongly what someone has told you, that's not faith. That's not the scripture-based faith. That is the, the common sense belief. Are you getting the difference? Somebody told you something and you believe strongly that the thing was going to happen. That's not faith-based. Because scripture clearly told us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And faith is a form of belief. It's a strong form of belief. But it's a supernatural kind of belief. Not the natural kind of belief. So somebody told you something and you believe strongly. And you say, I have a strong faith. No, it's a belief. It's a sense belief you have. Because scripture cannot be broken. It said faith only comes from the word of God. If it is not God's word that inspired that belief, it's sense realm. Please. If it's not the word of God that inspires it, it's sense realm. What is part of the word of God? Part of the word of God is prophetic declaration. That is God's word. Praise God. Huh? Somebody prophesies, declares over you. That is God's word. That's word from the spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why I'm giving example between somebody who, who, physic, who, who promised you some form of money next week. And you say, ah, no, I trust him. Every time I've asked him, he has always given to me. But sometimes the person has disappoint, right? Mm -hmm. So when the person disappoint, guess what happened? You truncate that link, it has failed. You fall back to the return. That's why you now turn to God. Say, Father, now it is in you, it is in your hands. This person, as at that time, you didn't bother. But we kind of try to uh, make fun of ourselves by, by, by saying we are mixing faith with it. Please, that's purely sense belief. When, when you were requesting from that person, based on your experience, you know the person doesn't fail. It's only when the person fail we turn over to faith. They return that line. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Abraham did that. And when Abraham did that, then it was not clear that, okay, his son side was okay. Listen carefully to where I'm going. His son, because I'm summarizing it. His son side is okay. So guess what? Abraham now knew what to do. He now knew he needs to boost his wife's faith. The concentration is now on his wife. So guess what? When he's not discussing with God, that is an equivalent of hearing God's word, studying God's word. He's not focusing on his wife. Because from his own end, he knows naturally he's okay. He guy got impregnated. He guy got impregnated not by promise. It was by natural means. Are you, are you seeing why childbearing takes time? Because they may, the both parties must convince themselves that, okay, naturally this won't work. They did not put aside anything natural. You can't be pursuing medicine, science, and you say you are pursuing faith at the same time. You are deceiving yourself. The more you do that, the more you postpone your date of delivery. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can't pursue the two. At the same time, that's like having both your active line and your redundant line. At, at, at the same time, you want to benefit from the two. It won't work. So if you want to pursue medicine, that's not faith realm. That is sense. Just pursue it when you are exhausted. 
then turn and face God. But if you have told yourself, for certain reasons, let me turn and face God. Then you face God. But don't confuse the two. Because that is gambling. People pursue that. They spend money. It works or it doesn't work. They do it several times. It works. Even in pursuing that, do you know that you pursue up to a point? The sense fail. You now bring God in. You now activate faith. I'm saying that you don't just say you are going into it by faith. No, don't deceive yourself. You need to hit one failure first. Then it now dawns on you that, okay, no, you need to turn your faith on for that same medical process. And then it happens. Testimonies abound everywhere. There was a case that it was so bad after so many failures, even the daughter was consigned for the woman and said, please don't do it again. Apart from her, the, the very high cost, the health risk involved in it, the very doctor getting the money said, please don't do it again. It was, as at that, it was at that point in time, it dawned on the couple that it wasn't this. That was the solution. No. They need to turn on their faith. This time around, the doctor has given up. It was the couple who now said, no way. This is not God's promise to us. God said we will have it. Are you seeing how faith came in now? But the saints had to fail them first. You can't activate a strong faith when you are still relying on your senses. You don't get there. That's what we didn't understand. All this while. So we are gambling. We are like holding the sense in, uh, in our left hand, the faith on the right hand, and then we are trying to do the two. We are perming two from three. No, it doesn't work. The Bible never said without faith and sense, it's impossible to please God. You say without faith, and it stops there. This is the summary, the summarized message that I want us to have today. So that by next week, when we pick up from there, we will now refresh. I will run through this again next week. So I expect that of next week teaching to be longer because we will go through this foundation. I know you've heard things that has upset your theological balance. So, so that you can go and think about it. Don't, don't always want to start with faith and think you can build a strong faith. No. Exhaust your sense first. Next week, I will bring the quadratic equation formula for how to know weak and strong faith also. How to eliminate your sense or to substitute. One takes you to weak faith. The other one takes you to strong faith. A lot of technicalities. But using the story, the account of Abraham makes it very, very simple. Very easy. God is not mad at you that you are trying your sense. That's what you need to try first. When it has failed, you declared it failed. Then you now know that how you know when you are in strong faith, you no longer care about the sense. The Bible says Abraham did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Abraham did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He has passed that stage. He has not seen that. No, it was not true. It's not this child. It's a child of promise, not a child of nature. Praise God. What are you expecting? Is it a child of nature, of natural cause, or a child of promise? That's a question you ask yourself. You never get a child of promise through the sense. A child of promise will always come through faith. And what has been prophesied to some of you is a child of promise. So quit trying to manipulate sense. So next time the woman wakes up and you see blood, you are in your period, and then your feet goes off the window. It means you are still hanging on the sense. The Bible says, Sarah did not even consider her age. Abraham did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Sarah herself did not look at her age, did not look at the deadness of her womb. She got to a point where she now knows that irrespective of what I feel, it doesn't matter. The mystery of a strong faith, part one. Let's rise up on our feet this morning. Mm -hmm.